fight and we don't have to kill everybody in the whole wide world really just needs to chill no we don't Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Just Chill with Oliver George. This is episode number 84, and I'm very excited about the guest sitting across from me. He is someone who has dove headfirst into comedy and done quite well at it, and he's also a phenomenal musician. But before we get into any of that, I want to remind you, if you're watching on YouTube and you would prefer audio only, you can get that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and other places like that. If you're listening to my voice on one of those platforms, though, and you didn't know that there was a visual side to this show, please come check it out here on YouTube. If you cross over to this side of things, I would really appreciate it if you'd consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me to keep growing this channel and I love connecting with new people. So if you're just jumping in now or you've supported me since the beginning, thank you so much because it means a lot to me. Finally, if you want to reach out to me, maybe with cool guest ideas or general feedback about the show, you can hit me up on social media or send me an email at justchillpodcasting at gmail.com. If you're reaching out, let me know if you have interest in one of these holofoil stickers with the show's logo on it and I'll send you one free of charge. <sighs> There we go. <laughs> All the fucking housekeeping out of the way. As I mentioned, my guest is a very, very funny man, very musically inclined, and we've been trying to set up this for a while. So yeah. uh, I'm very, very, very stoked that you're here. Logan Brown. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm like a super fan, by the way. Thank I've, you, I've, man. I've been listening since like, well, I've had to go back into the roster because we met kind of, you know, post like in the middle of COVID, I guess. But uh, yeah, like the Trevor Thompson episode. I've listened to both Tavis episodes. You're right still, like, like all the Zoom stuff. Your like, peers now. Yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah, yeah. These guys are now all my friends and shit. So it's, it's very cool. It's cool to see it in person too, The you know. Yeah, well, I mean, people only see a certain angle, and then, yeah, the whole room effect is definitely something I've heard a couple times when people come over if they've seen the show before. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, no, man, I'm really, really glad you're here. We tried to set this up. I think you reached out to me a long time ago to just oh, yeah. to say, like, you enjoyed the show or something. Yeah, yeah, no. And yeah. then I was like, fuck, man, I've been seeing your stuff, and you've been crushing it. Like, I'd love to do this, but... This summer, I think originally we had to reschedule because I got COVID again. Right. And then uh, if anyone watched the last episode, um, started off with me telling that guest that my grandfather had had a stroke. At that time, he was still with us, but not doing very well. And he has since passed. So that's yeah. obviously been a complication. My dad uh, and my mom have both been in Toronto a lot, dealing with uh, sorting out his affairs and all that. Right, so right, yeah. um, that's why I bounced back to Zoom for a bit. But now it's really cool. My dad's only here for the weekend. So I'm so glad this worked out and you were able to be here for this. And uh, my buddy Jason, who from the good guys, if you've seen that episode, a uh, musician from Ottawa, really good, amazing dude. And he's willing to sit in for my dad a couple times. So hopefully we'll still do some in studios uh, moving forward. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. Sorry to keep blabbing on. One thing I forgot to say in the intro, um, I hoping to get this up next Friday. So it should be a couple days before I'm set to perform at the Ottawa Comic Con as part of the superhero roast battle. I will be Batman roasting Spider-Man who will be played by Tavis. Uh, Jeffrey Davis, I think is Howard the Duck or oh, if God. I'm not mistaken, Daniel Araya is going to be Kite Man. Yeah. KB Harwood is uh, Poison Ivy. So if you're not from Ottawa, you might not recognize some of those names, but I, I assure you, they're all very, very funny people. And if you're in Ottawa and you can make it out, come to Comic Con. Jeffrey Davis is about to make Howard the Duck like win. You know, <laughs> Jeffrey Davis is he's like the kill. roast master. Oh, he's yeah. the roast master. He's, he's, he's yeah, he's got the title for life, as far as I'm concerned. I, I've talked about him a couple times on the show because I I've only met him in person a couple times. Yeah. Uh, and since then I see him all the time online commenting on Facebook and he is someone who consistently makes me laugh just with Facebook comments. <laughs> he so like he funny. writes the funniest shit. Yeah. yeah. I've never, I've never seen him like serious. It's always, he's always on, he's always got, and he's, his like joke output, even in conversation. It's just like, it's like the first thought that he thinks of immediately yeah. goes right into no, it. rapid fire for yeah, sure. Tavis funny. is very, very quick. Yeah, as well. Tavis is like that as well. I feel quite out of my league if I'm being honest, but I've got a week to keep prepping. So, right. And then all those guys are nice, you know, yeah. they give you some advice to prepare a bit ahead of time, sort of go over your, what you're going to be slinging at each other, at least a little bit. So yeah, yeah, that made me feel a little bit better. And as I was telling you before we started, uh, just it not being a roast where they're actually roasting me, they're roasting Batman instead. That gives me a lot of peace of mind of, of how I'm going to be able to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the idea is to make it like a good show. Like nobody yeah. wants to, nobody's as competitive as I am when it comes to stuff like that. Like my <laughs> goal is to win. So with every joke that bombs on your end, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? but Meanwhile, like, that's every, shitty yeah. for the audience potentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like everybody wants the show to, to go well, but yeah, that's, that's I'm, I'm excited to see how that, how that plays out. I hope my girlfriend can sneak over and take some video or something like that. So yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of which, I saw you at a show recently. I, it was actually the first time we met in person. That's right. You yeah. were hosting, uh, I guess it was the semifinals <laughs> where I was performing. <laughs> I did not make it through, but I gave my best efforts. Um, 
but yeah, it was cool to finally meet you in the flesh, and I thought it was a pretty funny night, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it was a good night. The crowd was a little bit tight, but like, you know, it's competition night. Everybody brings like their six or eight people. Well, on a Sunday night, you never know what the turnout's going to be, too. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, I mean, everybody was just, they were there, and they and they laughed at every joke. To their credit, they did laugh at every joke, but it was very much a ha-ha, next joke type yeah, yeah. of laugh, which is, you know, that just means I'm earning that 50 bucks. You know, No, you did a great good. job hosting. It's all yeah. good. Um, yeah, it was fun. That was fun. nice to finally meet you. It was nice to you know get get to watch a set and uh, I did I, a very bizarre set for this competition. But. Yeah, yeah, but I mean I like that stuff. Alt humor is like my thing. I'm really into like I think you should leave Tim Robbins. Yeah, yeah. Oh my like, god, I think you should leave is one of the oh, funniest man. Like, shows. <laughs> Tim and Eric, I think. Are Tim like, and Eric, I am hit or miss. I do like some of their stuff, but I, I think you should leave is. I don't know what it is, but it's like that guy's face yeah. and his facial expressions could just make me laugh alone without any context. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did a weird thing for anyone who wasn't there, which is probably most people where I was like basically pandering to the audience to vote for me because yeah. there was a voting portion. And I, I then handed out these like vote for Oliver George posters. Um, but honestly, what made me feel good, even though I didn't make it through the semis was at both the preliminary and the semis, I had one person each time come up to me after and ask me to sign uh, this little thing that I gave out. So oh, that's cool. Not not to like glow by any means, but no. it just fucking made me feel so happy. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, like even the littlest thing, those people maybe don't realize what an impact that has. Of course. Especially for an intermittent comedian like myself, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. And some other guy on Facebook messaged me too, being like, hey, like... I don't know why the judges didn't put you through or something like that. You yeah, know, those yeah. little things. I'm, I never got sour grapes about competitions, but that's the stuff that I love. Just yeah. any kind of audience feedback and positivity. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, this is, yeah, the competitions are, it's my first time being in like, being in one like comedy related and it's it's very strange because especially after like a full year like the only other time i've done competitions have been like guitar or music related mm. and then i've had to go to like durham or toronto where it's like battle of the you, bands you shake something. hands with people but like you don't you don't know these people where it's yeah. like Emmett is a morrison is like a really good friend i i've christine and i have only met like a couple of times she's but like so she's so funny she and fucking so, crushed she's so nice and oh, like all of these people are my friends and i'm like I'm going in there each night because because I'm so young and I'm only a year into doing stand up. So yeah. it's like for me to win this, if I win it, it's like a credit that legitimizes me. And even though I'm already getting paid, you know what I mean? Like it's it's just in my own. Well, you're head. not getting paid when you compete. No, no. Oh, but you mean like compete. in yeah, the larger like, sense that yeah, Yuck yeah. X is paying you sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like even though I already have like the stuff that and and like especially in the Ottawa scene, people take me seriously. Mm. It's like this is just one more thing. That As I can, they should, you man. know what like, I mean. Uh, and honestly, Maybe it's my father. Maybe I should call him and be like, <laughs> "Dad, why weren't you?" you know what I mean? I'm but, betting on you, man. Honestly, like, oh, thanks. Because dude. I mean, there's so many funny people going to the finals, but uh, you placed first in your prelims and yeah. in the semi round. Yeah. And you know who did that last year? Simone. That's true. And then she went on to win the whole yeah, thing. So yeah. the great Simone Holder. So yeah. you know, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for everybody though. And I that's kind of to what you were saying, right? Like when you're surrounded by all these people that you genuinely enjoy, uh, I mean, I don't know everybody, but there's lots of, there's always a few friendly faces at least. And yeah, it makes yeah. the edge of the competition thing. Like, I don't even really care. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I try, but like, I, like I said, no sour grapes. Cause yeah. everybody's awesome. And most of them are friendly and, yeah. and you're just happy for whoever made it. You yeah. Know? Like I've tried to be a little bit more relaxed with it. And like, you know, like I, I've started using that, like how hard and how seriously I'm taking the competition I've, and made that a running joke amongst everybody else. It's made it like I, I sent uh, Clint Gibbons a message the other day. Cause I, I bought his album. He was like, Oh, thanks for buying my album. And I was like, Oh, just softening the blow for when I take the victory. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like shit like that. Cause I'm trying to like, you know, well, I'm just, I'm having fun with it. It's all good where it's like, I was almost thinking too when you were hosting at our semi round. I was like, isn't that like technically a conflict of interest if you're still in the competition? <laughs> if you really thought someone was like, oh was shit, weird. this guy's gonna be, I don't want to go up against him in the finals. You could like sabotage the motherfucker a yeah, little bit if you yeah. wanted. Well, yeah, it was it was it was definitely very weird. But like Howard just like. You know, he just called whatever, me. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, I mean, I didn't feel that way at all that you were gunning yeah, for anybody. Yeah, I, I think more... I made one joke off the top about it, and then the mm. audience didn't respond to it. Was and that was, you know, I'm pretty self aware. I I know when a joke is going to be a stinker, and if the audience reacts to it, whether or not I'm like, no, that's a good fucking joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of like crowd work moments where, especially, got you guys laughing in the back, where I was like. This crowd sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like that was that was a good riff right there. But. Well, you don't want to be the person who blames on the crowd because so For often sure, those yeah. people are just people yeah. who didn't have a good set and yeah, they're like, yeah. no, no, I'm going to use this to cushion my, my yeah. ego. Yeah, and, you know? and and the bar musician slash like wannabe club comic in me is like, oh, I just didn't get them to like me. They That's why I failed in that regard. But like also like 
the the guy who's like made these jokes work in 99 of the other situations where those jokes have worked is like yeah, Nana was kind of shitty. At yeah, that, yeah. At that show, she should have uncrossed her arms and released those chakras a little bit. Sometimes people. it is the audience for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, well, okay. Well, let's get into that because, uh, I mean, you're getting paid to, like you said, to do hosting on weekends. I saw, which is like huge. Yeah. For man. people who don't do comedy, hosting at a big club when you're only a year in yeah. on a weekend, nonetheless, is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Man. And yeah. Um, so, but I wanted to talk about how you got into comedy because I know, like you said, it was only a year ago. If I did my research correct, it was August 5th, 2021 was the first time you did an open mic somewhere. Very close. June, uh, sorry, July 29th. Oh, so yeah. close. July Fuck. 29th. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've always been a comedy guy. Comedy is like my first love through and through. Um, but I started playing uh, guitar and music um, when I was like super young. Um, and like, you were a touring musician, right? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. So I, I, like, I got into comedy at, at nine. Um, was oh, when I wow. started seriously like looking at people on stage and being like, oh, it's so cool that they do that. You know, my dad and I have like a really like we really bonded over like Comedy Now specials nice. just for laughs, you know, like which Comedy is really, central, whatever. It's yeah. so huge to like know these guys now, like especially guys like like Glenn Foster and Wafik. And it's like, mm. I watched you, dude. You know, yeah. I've, I've seen you on TV. Um but I, I don't have anything. Like, I'm not going to start stand-up at nine. What life experience do I have? You know what I mean? So, I, But you were still dissecting it and taking it in. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got into music, like, 13 to, like, 12, 13 was when I first started playing guitar. And then yep. that was just kind of the avenue that I went down. Um, playing guitar. Let's just... Sidebar, fucking shredding oh. guitar. No, honestly, because I'm like a rhythm guitarist. Yeah. I fucking hate doing solos. And yeah. you just make it look so easy. The Instagram videos, anyone oh, you should go check. Your your socials will come up at the beginning of the episode, but I encourage anyone to go check out any picture or image where you see Logan with a guitar. Click on that video because, yeah. wow. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Really, yeah. man. Yeah, I was a big, like, I was a big rock guy. And, like, I've always been, uh, uh, like, run before you can crawl type. Like, the first mm. song I ever learned was Black Magic Woman. Like, guitar solo and all, like, that was the first song that wow. I ever, yeah, like. that's yeah. ambitious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and it was just, like, the mechanical aspect of, like, bending and vibrato and everything it was just like i'm gonna figure that out first because that's why would i why would i try and do the neil young thing i have no interest in that yeah. you know um and it's i guess that's sort of helped me with comedy as well like i always thought of myself as a comedian even when i was like doing just dog shit material at music open mics in smith's falls ontario um but uh yeah i mean music was a like that's a almost 12 year career and then oh. COVID happened and my life got ripped away from me and uh, I had bills. So I had to pivot into something. So I got a decent government ish job and was like, well, I've got the money. Why don't I just try stand up? you know? And I had like, I had gone into a pretty, pretty dark place right before that. And it put, uh, I, without getting too heavy, I, I call it my, my, maybe my preemptive bucket list if, if we want to go down that road. Well, like I said, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, but I, I've seen stuff or, or heard you speak of that yeah. you were at like a kind of end of the road. Like, I don't yeah. know if I want to keep living. Yeah. Type yeah. Situation. Like it, it got pretty like, cause I have, I have pretty bad uh, ADHD. That's what um, I was going to ask. Was this based in mental health or like childhood trauma yeah, or uh, I'm addiction? Sure it's a little of column A, column B, yeah. honestly. Uh, cause like, I'm I'm sure that the trauma goes hand in hand with the with the the ADHD a little bit. And I saw a post of yours where you uh, and again maybe it was just for the joke, but you had written something about how you were the shoulder to cry on for the adults in your life, and I didn't yeah. know if that was based in reality. That's actually absolutely based in reality. For so that sure. seems yeah. like something that could you know yeah. leave a heavy weight on your emotions. You know. Yeah, yeah, man. I grew up I grew up a little quick. Actually, right around the time that I got super into music, it's always like, and it's something that I'm trying to dial back now because it's always a job for me. Like this is fun. Like obviously, stand up is very very fun. It's probably the most fun thing I do, but it's, I never got into it just for the fun. The yeah. second I got off stage, I was like, oh, this is what I meant to That's do. That's good though. Forever. That's you know honestly I mean? good. That's what I don't really have. Like, right, right. And right. I think a lot of people who get up and do comedy and aren't necessarily bad at it either, but like, they just don't have that, that right. urge to be like, completely sucked into the vortex yeah i say that like it's a bad thing but like for some people it's great that is the life path you yeah know? yeah but speaking of christina like she's someone who has flat out said on this podcast like she has no interest in yeah becoming a you know a full-fledged comedian yeah. but she'll still go and do comedy yeah. intermittently or, yeah. or fringe fest or whatever yeah despite being a killer oh she's amazing being, yeah isn't that great I'm so happy for you, Christina. That's fantastic, huh? Yeah, it is frustrating when someone with a natural gift is kind of just like, no, I'm going to do this instead. But hey, you know. No, it's fine. It's good to know what you want. You know, it's it's the balance, right? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, man, I got like I got a real sort of like 
well, if I'm going to check out, I at least want to do a couple of things that I've always wanted to do. And I sat, I showed up, the open mic started at eight o'clock and I sat there till 1130 just drinking Diet Pepsi after Diet Pepsi as like band after band went up just playing fucking the stones had and, you already gotten clean at this point no i wasn't i wasn't super clean yet but i just wanted to, i wanted to do this you want to be focused yeah for that. i okay. wanted to do this level-headed because i practiced like a five minute routine um none of which has made it into anything that i do now um and uh yeah man it was like and everybody knew me as a musician because i had already been touring that circuit for like the last two or three years i was just doing like bar gig after bar gig so like everybody was like oh logan's gonna get up and play logan's gonna get up and play and i was like yeah i'm thinking about it and then finally it took pat maloney god bless this guy uh the owner of bowie's which i now run a, a, a an indie room out of uh put his hand on my shoulder and was like you want to get up buddy and i was like would you mind if i did some stand-up and he was like fuck yeah i want you to do some stand-up nice. yeah yeah and he's this like, is in smith falls right? yeah man and he's such a great dude he's like a world champion whistler like, oh weird yeah like he, he but awesome yeah he was he's a bar musician or was a bar guy as well but he would tour with like a second microphone just loaded up with reverb and would like whistle the way that you play the harmonica oh, you know wow. what i mean i've heard some of those guys on the radio before yeah yeah, yeah very cool it's like eight feet tall like super like super big beard like you it know. looks like a cool room too i like the decor there yeah yeah it's very cool very set up for music and a, a listening room like the bar is is there because he needs to make money but the the focus is on the music so my it's, two oldest kids actually their their mom just moved out to smith's falls so oh cool i don't know if they're all i'll go pick them up at some point maybe i'll uh yeah, or, or if I drop them off or whatever, go and check out this Bowie's oh, place. Oh, dude, yeah. for sure. It's like, yeah, it's so cool. So cool. And yeah, no, I got up and it, it went well. I mean, now if I go back and listen to the audio file, I'm sure it's, they'll be like, it, it'll be saturated with like pity laughs. And now what I would consider like an OMA set. Yeah. But at the time I was like, I got off stage and I called my girlfriend. I was like, I fucking destroyed, babe. I was so good. And, and then, you didn't like load the audience with a bunch of friends or anything like that? No, no, I didn't know anybody. I, did bar- I told her and that was it. That's yeah. a good sign. And to the point, to the point where like everybody was upset. Like I got calls from my mother in law. She's like, "Why would you tell me that you're gonna go do uh, stand up?" And I'm like, "Because I didn't want." You you're know, like I'm hoping to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I, uh, and like nothing could be worse than bombing in front of your. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly people, wants to come you know, to you know? a lot of my shows, and yeah. like for this competition, the first round, I was like don't come for the preliminary round. Yeah. I'm trying this shit out. It might be terrible. Yeah. And then yeah. when I made it to the semis, I was like, all right, you can come to this one because you know, yeah. I feel a little more confident, but yeah, it's like you said, it's more 10 times more embarrassing to do anything badly in front of people whose opinions you really care about. Oh, you know? for sure. For sure. Yeah. So I, yeah, it was, uh, it was it went great and the second it was done i got off stage and i was like oh, i'm a comedian but not in the way that like people are like i'm a comedian it was like yeah. oh fuck like this is what i've been looking for this the whole time i've been looking for this and i and i found it and so like you I, weren't putting it on like as a label everyone look at me i'm a yeah, comedian more yeah. like internalized yeah. just like this is my I, calling i knew i've had a feeling that would be like a faux pas and then after talking to like comics they're like oh yeah definitely because i i bought a website in like the first like three months and they're like why would you do this is what everybody does. Yeah. I did the same, made uh, business cards at Staples. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I've heard many other people did the same thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it's not so. bad to be enthusiastic. That's exactly. what I think that's, in yeah, the end, you know. It, yeah. And I can, like, now, especially now that I am doing clubs and I try not to do new material at clubs, maybe like a tag or something like yeah. that, I can see where people get a little bit frustrated with, like, the open mic circuit and people being like, oh, I'm a comic. And yeah. then they go up and do bullshit for six minutes. And I'm like, hey, I've got, like, I've got a notebook worth of stuff that I want to get done today. So yeah. if you wouldn't mind like not running the light, that'd be, that'd be swell. Yeah, but, I get you know, it. <laughs> but also like the person in me that didn't like that projected on me when I first started is like, ah, and which is also very close to make, you know, I talked to, uh, let's do this again in 10 years and see how thrilled I am about like new comedians doing mics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like right now I'm like, oh, uh, whatever, man. Like, you know, it's, it's cool. Cause I'm so close to remembering what that, what that felt like at, yeah, the, yeah. at the start. So, well, everybody's at a different spot in that journey, you yeah, know, exactly. I mean, I remember feeling like that at the beginning, I was like, uh, you know, I just want to have fun. And if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. And that's kind of still how I feel, but I learned, okay, then, then just do it once in a while. And, mm-hmm. and also, you know, just treat it with some respect You like, I never run the light. I'm always really self-conscious about that because yeah. deep down, I, I don't want to call myself a comedian because I don't think I've earned it, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm someone who likes to be silly on stage sometimes, yeah, but yeah. you know, being a comedian, especially when I'm interviewing so many people who really 
do the comedy thing. You yeah. know, it's like it puts it in perspective every time. Even even you, like if you're someone who's been doing it only a year. Yeah. I first tried stand up like seven years ago, right. and you've probably already surpassed me in stage time. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know. I I, I stopped counting after the year because everybody's like, you gotta gotta stop count. Because I was like, I did a one fifty, and they're like, you gotta stop counting. Like, <laughs> for sure, stop counting, dude. Um, you know, uh, especially now that you get like when you get longer sets, for sure, it's like the six minutes don't matter as like the first the, the the first like 30 shows of just five minute sets like don't matter as much as like the next ones that you do that are all like 15, 20 sets that yeah. are, like opening and middling and shit. But uh, so I've heard. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah, mean, I I'm, never I, made it too I, far I, into that <laughs> realm I, either. I still really dig doing a tight five, but you know, whatever. So, I think the longest set I've ever done is like a 20 minute set. Yeah. 20 minutes. I don't are, think it went well. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes are, are fun because you can like you can just kind of sit back and like be in the pocket like as a musician you can like sit back and hang in the pocket a little bit mm. more like i find six seven minute eight eight's okay but like six and seven minutes now i i don't struggle because i've got like i've got my set six minute set that like my seven minute set that does really it well it feels cramped yeah man it's like i'm, yeah. I'm like you know if this punchline's out and then i I don't want to step on anybody's laughter specifically in like a competition setting, but it's like, I got to get to the next thing. Cause like yeah. Mike, I've got a closer that takes this long to, to do. And I want to make sure that I get that closer done. But I've always found that to be kind of like almost an oxymoron situation with comedy is like, you want more time and flexibility to be loose and kind of discover your flow and all that, which right. is something you need to do when you're learning to do comedy. But that's what no one will afford you when you're starting. Yeah, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. You have to get to a point where you're already respected and then you can kind of, you know, just yeah. be in that flow and kind of not have a total concrete plan of exactly what you're gonna do and yeah. kind of roll with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucks in that way, but I understand it as well. Yeah, yeah. And like for someone like me where it's like, I'm. I'm very methodical with like the way that I write my material. It's like, I'm now just feeling comfortable enough that I can like, if something hits an, an, like an audience member or a section in a particular way where it's like, I can see they really connected with that joke yeah. or the premise of that joke. I want to dive into that Lean a little bit more, it, yeah. but because I focus so hard on like making sure that I had solid material for that first five, six, seven minutes, I'm like not as like, I can do it if the audience is really with me and they're really hot, but I can't do like what Tavis does where he can just make something out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's like wizardry. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So that's kind of my next year's goal is to like really figure out crowd work and like how to lean lean in with my jokes and like take it in a certain way and maybe pull a tag out of the audience and yeah. then be able to put that into my set. Like I think that would be cool. The writing well, it's stressful stage, when you know you have only seven minutes and you've prepared six and a half because you yeah. wanted to get as many jokes and you're not going to go down some tangent with an audience member because then you're like, no, oh, I can't divert. Then I'm going to not be able to do my finisher or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's exactly. very stressful. Exactly. Yeah. If you're at least the type of person I am, I'm anxiety ridden. Like, I feel like that is the most stressful part about being on stage is like wondering where you are time wise. Yeah. And yeah. you don't really want to check because that ruins the flow. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, the light is good, but often you don't notice the light because you're so yeah, you know, yeah. intent on what you're going to say. See, I have like a four and a half minute song, um, which I didn't get to do because I knew you were going to be there. So I was like, I'm not going to do musical oh, comedy I wouldn't have cared. just for a set when I know that you're doing well, it. Well, actually, you're pretty fucking good on guitar. I might have cared a little. <laughs> yes. I might have been like a little self conscious about my. Uh, Right. Uh, finger picking skills. But. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But like, I know the song takes four and a half minutes. So I usually have a light on my phone of like when I have to wrap up the stand up portion of my mm. set before I go into the song. So I don't, I'm never as concerned with the light normally. And if I do run the light, um, which has happened every now and again, they're like indie, um, what is it like, like a uh, brewery type shows where somebody's like, do anywhere between 14 and 18. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, that's that the shit. That. <laughs> That is such a large metric of time that yeah. you need me to, to staple that. But all right, like I'll do what you want me to do. Like That's kind of nice though. Yeah. 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 No, I, like, I'm off. very, very fortunate that way where it's like, if I have had a situation where I'm like, I'm not even close to that, the, that bit that sets up the song. It's usually guy a, like a, the producers like half in the bag and it's like, keep going. Yeah. Keep going, kid. You're doing fine. So songs are nice like that though. Like you said, yeah. cause you know much more so than a lot of just stand up where it, you might do a same joke, but it runs twice as long the second time because you, you know, just your flow is a little different. You, yeah. you spaced out your wording a little different or you were just a little calmer that time. Yeah. But a song's pretty consistent every yeah. time as long yeah. as you're not like jacked on six coffees or something, then you yeah. might do a punk version yeah. or whatever. But It's good for eating up the time as well because like it again, 
having all the stuff within the first year is like people are like, no, you don't. But it's like, yeah, man, well, I have 15 minutes of material or 20 minutes of material because I have 15 worth of stand up and then there's a five minute song. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not like I, you know, like the 10 minutes is and then the five minutes like it's that's that's why that is the way that it is. I wasn't sitting here being like, yeah, all of this is funny. It's like, no, no, no. I have an hour's worth of dog shit that'll never see the light of day <laughs> because I sit in front of my computer and write every day. It's like, but all this is garbage, man. <laughs> like, you know, so. When you had the epiphany of like, this is me, this is comedy, I love this, was it instantaneous then that all of your dark thoughts kind of started to dissipate pretty quickly? And oh, no, they're, still there. they're oh, still there. For the, for I'm sure. sure they're still floating around, <laughs> yeah. but I mean like in a big way where you were like, no, like I have something I really want to live for now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because it, it, I mean, it turned to fear a little bit because of the ADHD thing. I was worried that it was a hyper fixation, but mm. I knew, I knew in my, in my like, in my soul that, that it was like it was something different there was something different with this sort of thing especially because i had been obsessing over it for so long mm. like it wasn't like it wasn't like i had discovered podcasting or something or like and, i'm gonna i'm kind of into figure skating now or something yeah, really random yeah, or like, like man i really do like kettlebells i wonder if i could be like yeah. joe rogan and do a clean really you know like <laughs> um but uh no with because i was so obsessed with stand-up i knew that this was like something different and everybody was so supportive like it was it wasn't a situation where i mean even music like at when i told my dad that i wasn't going to go to college i mean he was kind of apprehensive about that even though i'd had six or seven years as a musician like not making great money but, no, like but making money something. and like and like he could see that i i had an ear for it and that i could play the way that i could play like yeah. pretty early on but when as soon as i was like i think i'm a stand-up comedian he's like oh yeah for sure he's like you, you're the you're funny as fuck kid <laughs> like, that's awesome yeah so it was uh it was it was pretty cool it was pretty cool so uh, where did the sobriety uh, plan come into play? Because like you said, you weren't totally free of all that. And as I understand it now, you're like straight edge, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I, I smoke weed every now and again, but I'm okay. a smoke weed and like put my fingers in my belly button type of guy. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not out. productive. Yeah, I'm out for like six <laughs> hours if I have like even a, the smallest of tokes. But booze is a... Uh, booze is for sure. For no, I, and I were you in other shit, harder stuff? or No, I never got into harder stuff. Uh, booze and food are my two biggest vices. Oh, okay. food, and food is like, food, honestly, like maybe I'm just that far removed from booze, but like that one's a trickier one because you have to eat. You can't just like go yeah. cold turkey on food, you know? You can do fasting so that at least when you eat shitty stuff, you're like, okay, but I haven't eaten in 20 hours. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, I'm that's, a metabolic chamber right now or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, booze was, was, I mean, logistically didn't make sense because I was going to, I have to drive. I live in Smith Falls and I have to drive to Ottawa like three to five uh, shows a week. Mm. So it didn't make sense to have a, a drink every every night. Um, it, uh, I, I don't know how to slow down. Like if I'm, if we're drinking, we're drinking, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a like, oh yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a pop and go out to the the bar and say hi to Rick and then get so you're back. you're just getting me. wasted every oh, time? Every time. Yeah, every time. Because I can't, I can keep myself from getting wasted, but I did find that I was noticing if I would have a drink, it was very rare that I wouldn't at least have a couple more. Yeah. Like yeah. I find it very hard to have a beer and then just that's it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And see, I'm like, I don't have a high tolerance because I'm kind of, I'm a little guy. I'm like five foot five and mm. a half. So it's like, I'd have, quick. I'd have like a double of whiskey and that's just enough for me to want to have another double of whiskey and whiskey was my big thing because i you know i have a mustache you can't you have to they can't, kind of have to pair the two um so i would have like you know like so much and then by the by the end of the night i'm like oh i'm i'm shit faced right like i'm going to bed shit faced it's tuesday i have to get up at six to go deliver somebody's mail tomorrow like what am i doing with yeah. my life so yeah i had my last actually on a live stream i did my first new talent showcase at yuck yucks um i got home poured myself a nip which was the last actually no i still have a little bit of uh, canadian club in the uh in in my uh no crown royal in my apartment interesting and, that you would uh, keep it on the premises yeah 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 so. and uh, i took it uh, live and i was like i think i'm done it was a great night and uh, i'm gonna do some more stand-up and i'll see you guys you know whenever and it's all been onward and upwards from there eh? yeah 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 that's so, awesome to hear man yeah yeah it's uh yeah. i think it's the change a lot of people need sometimes you know for sure for sure yeah, yeah. um okay well shit uh let's move on to Mental health we covered. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, oh, your heritage I wanted to talk about. Oh, Because you have yeah. a very interesting heritage. Yeah, You're Irish yeah. and Nigerian, yeah? Yeah, yeah. My dad's Irish. Like, he's not, like, 
not accent Irish, but like he's, you know, like, uh, he's got Irish blood in him though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like both his parents are, are Irish and they, you know, they're Canadian and, and it's like a hundred percent. I like, as soon as I did the DNA test, it was almost pretty much split 50, 50, my oh, wow. mom's, uh, 50, 50 between Ghanaian and Nigerian. Um, so fully African though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she's like, she's fairly like light skinned as well. Hmm. So I'm sure that there's a little bit, like, I'm sure I'm not split 50, 50. I'm probably like 40%. Uh, Cause you have a joke Af- about how you look like Colombian or something. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I'm, you I'm, could be on Narcos for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Especially when the hair grows out, because it's yeah. like I've got, got like, a fro kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like a white person's afro. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, like Weird Al's hair. Yeah, or something. yeah. It's yeah. very much a Weird Al thing going on. Weird Al in the '80s had that little fro. Like, yeah, that yeah. White guy fro. Yeah. yeah. Synonymous with the accordion. Have yeah. you been back to either of the respective motherlands? Was my main question. No, no, no. no. Uh, that's like, bucket list. I'm guessing. Not even, man. Like, <laughs> well, I guess Africa, depending where you go, can be kind of sketchy, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't see. This is the this is the thing about me is it's like I have interests. Like, I have like seven or eight interests, and I'm very much one of those guys. It's like, cool, Grand Canyon. Probably could have just Googled that. You know what I mean? Like, like that. I'm, I'm someone probably filmed it on a drone that you can yeah, watch on YouTube yeah, or something. I yeah. take exception to that. Yeah, my dad's been to the Grand Canyon. He took his folks there. Like, what? you need to go. Oh, really? And stand really? on the rim. And just feel your soul. Really? Really? It's like another world. Go to the Grand Canyon. Really? Wow. Right, he just right. squashed everything. Grand you said. Canyon no. for sure. Nigeria, maybe not. But yeah. the Grand Canyon for sure. Again, I agree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it could be really dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And just all the shots you got to get to go to Africa in general. And oh, right, right. Yeah. Just for all the potential Yeah, well, I've been things prepared to get up. vaccinated over these last True, years. True, yeah, so yeah. I'm ready to go, baby. But um, no, Grand Canyon, I even saw the videos that you took there and even... From the video, I was like, holy shit, it really is big. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of the wonders of the world, is it not? Grand Canyon? It, one of the modern it, wonders, yeah. yeah. That's, it it's should, it should it, be. It's yeah. got to be. It's got to be. And and the pictures don't do it justice. Uh, I've, I saw lots of pictures, but when you stand there, it, it you just go somewhere else. It's it's You got to go. Really? Yeah. All, right. All right. Grand Canyon. All right. Stand up at the Road Grand trip. Canyon. Road trip. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about podcasting. We're doing one right now, but I noticed you've dabbled in several and I wanted to know, are these things you're, you're planning on running concurrently or have you just been experimenting to kind of see what sticks? Because you had uh, Finger on the Funny. Yes. I Don't Make the Rules. Yeah. And now most recently, Black Man, White Privilege. Yeah. Which yeah. is a great name. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Black Man, White Privilege is around for sure. It's just, I've been, just been, I'm in competition mode. And I think the last time I recorded it, we were in that heat wave and there's no ac in my office so like mm. i was stopping the video every 15 minutes to just like dab my head <laughs> with a towel like a southern bell yeah yeah and then i had some like personal stuff happen to my, but that is coming back for sure um and i want to do that one right now is like me working out material it seems okay. and i want to do that but i also want to do interviews as well with like cool people i don't want it to be like like just comedians i want to have like you know I've, I've done some cool like shows these past couple of months with like like um just gonna say always a host never a guest yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's just, happened a couple of times yeah, yeah jf yeah. had me on his show and a couple other people but yeah yeah but like i like i like podcasting i really do it's just uh yeah i find that when i interview people i'm too like I'm too CBC interviewee because I had a podcast before called Brown Sound Podcast where I interviewed guys like I, a lot of musicians like Don Ross I had on, oh, cool. Lloyd Spiegel I had on, Daniel Champagne, guitar players and shit. Okay. But it was very much like, who are your biggest influences? And then like I would do the intros as myself and I talk very much like like my banter on stage as a musician was very comedy-like. Mm. So it was like I was always riffing in the podcast. I've known a lot of magicians that are like that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was always riffing and then it would get into this like, like very like tight ass sort of interview segment and then go back into well that was the show hope you guys enjoyed it oh, you know, weird. You know? just like from nerves of actually talking to the person i think so yeah so now mm. that i've got that experience of like bombing on stage being my most authentic self it's like okay well nothing can hurt me now like yeah. who do i care now if like some fucking guitar player from winnipeg doesn't like me you well, know what I mean? was it all on zoom i'm guessing too then right you know uh that was back like that was or like Skype pre-pandemic so i was able to do quite a few like, oh I would okay go on cool. location to sit like the nac and stuff and do, oh, right uh, on. do some of these like because uh, i was gonna say concerts. zoom always has that kind of disconnect a little bit where like yeah, you can yeah. be as prepared as you want but it just there's something that feels a little 
not bad, but just a little off, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I do better in front of people anyways. Like, I like I like that sort of vibe. I'm, I've got a little bit of a hearing impairment from... I started playing death metal, and oh, I lost shit. a little bit... The, I think it's called cookie bite syndrome medically. More like death metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I did. I lose. I lost, like, the top of my... Uh, the upper registers of my hearing from, like, listening to... Oh, brutal. You know, like, drums with no, uh, no hearing protection. So yeah. it's better if I can see you and, like gauge in real time what you're what you're saying versus you can read lips yeah yeah a little bit so yeah Uh, i with my son i've been learning asl for like four or five months now oh really yeah so fun man i mean like i am nowhere near confident enough to do it on the show even yeah yeah um but it's just so fun i don't know maybe i'm assuming only certain types of people would enjoy it maybe but uh as a bonding thing with him but even if i was doing it by myself i just find something about the physicality yeah I don't know. Most of them make sense or they're, they're just kind of cute or whatever. And like, I found I picked it up pretty quick. Maybe that's another reason I enjoyed it, but right. Right. But then I watched somebody who uh, is fluent and I can't, they go oh, way yeah. too fast. I can't understand anything they're doing. So yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, I don't know why. Oh yeah. Cause hearing impairment. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You should check it out. See, I don't know. Yeah, just yeah. learn the alphabet and start there. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I've talked about this a few times, but really if any deaf person, came into contact with me i'm sure i would embarrass myself <laughs> right right that's how i feel about french like i'm every anytime mm. i think like oh i'll take duolingo and then get a lesson a private lesson or something and and learn how to because I, I you make way more money i guess in in quebec as a comedian than you do in ontario um and uh, i was like oh it'd be cool to like do a couple you know but like call myself a humorist for like you know yeah, yeah. a year or something and, and just translate my set and then I watch like Julian Dion or like uh, or yeah. Trevor or uh, like, Rash Ellie. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, nah, fucking, I don't know, I don't yeah. know what that is. Is that how you say your name, Rash? Uh, Rachelle Ellie. Rachelle yeah. Ellie, sorry, yeah. I always see posts from her, and she seems like a very funny person, but yeah. I've never actually met her. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I was gonna mention your spouse. I don't know if because yeah. you mentioned she has an anime type store, right? Yeah, yeah. In Smith Falls as well, yes, Taboo yeah. Collectibles. Uh, Taboo Boutique. Boutique. My yeah, bad. Yeah. Um, so are you an anime fan was kind of where I was going to go with that. I am. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely got me into it more. And we now have like opposing and cause like we come together for, she's into the cute stuff. And if I can find an anime that's like cutesy, but is entertaining for me to watch, not that I'm like a dude, but I definitely don't like some of those like high school romance type animes. Mm. So Demon Slayer was one that we really got into. And now I'm trying to get her into like Attack on Titan. And she's, we're into My the Studio Ghibli stuff. So the, like, uh, uh, I'm a big Spirited Away guy. She's really into Ponyo and uh, Totoro. But uh, I know all these names. I've seen none of them. Oh, really? Spirited Away is the best. That's really okay. like, yeah, especially considering like. That was like award winning and stuff, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's that's the one that everybody knows. And for good reason. It's it's for sure the best. But they're all great. Like, I mean, they're all like. Well, I heard a lot of buzz about Attack on Titan. And I saw some images that made it look pretty gnarly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh I think I was turned off from anime at a young age because I could not for the life of me get into Dragon Ball. And I had lots of friends who were into it, but I just didn't fucking understand what any of it was about. Like, why does their hair grow and why do they got fucking monkey tails sometimes? And like, I'm sure it all makes sense when you get into the lore and some people have tried to explain it to me, but I was all full up on Marvel already or whatever, you know, like that just wasn't, I wasn't ready to take on another fandom that didn't even like outwardly appeal to me. Yeah. And I associated it kind of with like Sailor Moon and like, I don't know what other animes. Those are probably the two biggest mainstream Americanized right. ones. Yeah. But. And they do have a tendency to over explain like, getting into it now. There's definitely, cause there a lot of them are adapted from manga. Mm. So it's like where John Byrne would have done like those big panels of just like John guys Byrne. fighting each other. Yeah. You would have like exposition dumps of like, Oh, I hope that guy doesn't hit me in the ribs again because I definitely can't take another rib hit. So what yeah. I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go over my head and I'm like, that guy's going to fucking hit you in the rib hit for sure. If you don't shut the fuck up and just hit him. <laughs> over the, you know what I mean? Um, so there's, there's a lot of that and that can get a little bit like, this isn't even my final form type of shit. It's like, I just, just do the thing, man. I don't need you to explain yeah. doing the thing before you do the thing. It's all internal monologue or just saying it out loud. Yeah. They're internal actually, monologue oh, okay. type stuff. Um, there's some of that in, in mainstream American comics. Yeah, too. yeah. Yeah. Depends on the writer really. For sure. Yeah. But uh, I think one of the other things that turns me off about anime is just that, you know, that reputation of just like these overweight, unwashed, <laughs> disgusting guys with like a shelf full of little like bikini clad, huge fake tits. Like, yeah, yeah. and it's all like schoolgirl, like adolescent age yeah, yeah. type stuff. And I don't know, it just creeps me out. And yeah. I never wanted to be a part of that crew. I don't yeah, know. And yeah. hentai and all the vine sex. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. There's no. so many layers of like, I don't even want to ask you questions about it. Not you specifically, but like someone that's into that. I don't even really want to know. Yeah. But yeah. like, how is this like mainstream like 
how are you not like hiding this shame a little bit? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like accepted to some degree. Yeah. And anyways. Well, I think they look at it the same way they, as if I'm not a, a, into anime, but like a, a lot of those guys have like the pictures on their wall, the same way that you would have had like Farrah Fawcett or something like that. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it's, it's not kind of uh, weird though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like, mean, I wouldn't have a picture of like Marge Simpson, like in a bikini or something. Yeah, it's, Although it's, some people are into that. It's shit too. not for me for sure. I definitely just like the stories and everything like that. Yeah. And it's the same. I mean, Taylor's got a couple of like bunny girl figures which is like girls in bikinis but she likes to art as an artist she thinks it's like cool well and if a girl has one i'm sorry way less creepy <laughs> i mean she could be some raging like super horny lesbian who has the same thoughts about this this figure that the right. sweaty fat dudes have but right. um yeah. for some reason way less creepy if it's yeah. a girl it's yeah like, let's like, normalize hey. double standards actually you know what like let's <laughs> know it's creepy as shit man somebody like me like yeah no but i mean like you say you like anime but you're not encompassing all those other attributes i was yeah. speaking it's the same way there's lots of people who like play magic the gathering and are totally normal people but yeah. then there's the other people where you can smell them the second you walk into the place <laughs> and it's just like you should be summoning a shower <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely absolutely anyways yeah yeah no. um Oh yeah, she she performed with Buble too, right? Your, yeah, your uh, well, she was, significant other. We we met um Christ 7 years ago and then the first maybe 6 months I I started playing guitar for her and we toured together for 6ish years like oh, right wow. up, right up until I I I started doing bar the bar scene on my own. Yeah, you told me Eric Alper was like your your PR yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, so it was really cool that you were past guest. Yeah, you had him on the, on the show. Yeah, he was our he was our PR guy. Gave me the best advice, gave us Nicest both the, the best advice ever. He was like if you're going to do corporate events, charge three grand because best case scenario, you get the three grand and they're like, yeah, that's a fair price. He's like, or you don't have to do a fucking corporate show. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you may as well just charge it the yin yang for him. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. So then my, like our corporate price went way up. Plus and, a guy like him was so experienced, you know, that he's saying that with knowledge that lots of other people are charging yeah, that absolutely. for corporate events. Absolutely. So it's not just random advice, you know? Yeah. And he, I mean, he got us like, he got us on... Like he charged quite a bit uh, monthly. I don't know what he charges now. Obviously, like I'm sure COVID has has inflated his his price, which it should. I mean, the guy delivers every time. Mm. Um, but for the like, he charged us like quite a bit. But we made all that back because every radio station he got us an interview. Those people would like call us or send us emails and be like, "Hey, just let us know when the album's out, and we'll we'll put it in rotation." Sweet. And then we did, and it was like CBC, especially like back then. I don't know about now, but like I remember our first SoCan check, especially Taylor, because she was the primary songwriter. Like, which I didn't care because we lived together. So whatever, I was like, yeah. whatever, honey. Like, if pizza's on you this week, that's fine. Mm. Um, but you know, I remember her SoCan check, like looking at it and being like. I thought it was supposed to be like 12 cents. <laughs> it was like 1200 bucks. She's like, what the fuck? Like wow. what's, what's going on here? Yeah. It's a nice paycheck. Yeah, yeah man. It was, it was doing great. something you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we did, we did that for quite a bit. Um, and a lot of cool stuff, man. I mean, like she opened up for Lord. Like, oh, nice. uh, yeah. Like in the, in the early days recorded in LA at like Tom Panunzio's studio, uh, set Weezer, their last album, maybe not the last one, but the one before that set that one back. Uh, by about two weeks because Tom Panunzio liked her so much. Oh, he, like, wow. kicked them out of the main studio and put her in the main studio to no record way. a record. Yeah, it was pretty That's cool. That's a baller move. Um, and then... And so the Buble thing happen. It was just at his concert or something? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's her guy. That was, like, the I, only reason... I saw the picture. She is staring into oh, his eyes dude. in a way that should make you very, very nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. No, no. But, it's uh, years ago now. You know, yeah. He's yeah. married. He's a... But uh, yeah, that was like, that was her guy. Like the only reason she got into music was like to one day sing with Michael Bublé. Like she used to sit on a swing and listen to Feeling Good, you know, like just mm. as, a, as a kid, right? And uh, she, it, she had given up music. Like she was like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Because we, wow. we had an interview with like, I don't know if like, we didn't sign an NDA or anything, but like for legal purposes, it'll be like, we had an interview with like, Lake's uh, for, uh, manager and the weekdays manager uh, instead of who these guys actually are. Um, and, oh, uh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know I, the Lake's reference. I don't get that. But uh, the, the week. Yeah. The, day, yeah. yeah. So these guys like sat us down and they're like, oh, like here's, here's a path of success if you want to be like millionaires. And then we were like, oh, what if we just want to do like jazz festivals throughout Ontario? And they're like, we're not interested then. Like, what mm. the, you know, and then we kind of like took the wind out of our sails a little bit. And she was like, well, if like, if every industry, because it was, I mean, this was probably like meeting 400 out of like top exec that we, we just couldn't find somebody that gelled with us and saw our vision of like, and of course, 
to their respect, like they're dealing with like Drake money. Why would they yeah. want to? Why would superstar they, or bust? Yeah, yeah. Why would they want to talk to the two of us that just want to be a jazz duo and make like you know so, like small theaters? You want to make a living, or yeah, whatever. Exactly. yeah, exactly. So the, you know, no hard feelings. We just don't gel. But it was after that like four hundredth meeting of like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And I was yeah. like, Well, I have to do this. So you got to figure something out. And uh, it was as soon as she like gave up not not gave up but as soon as she was like i'm okay i want to just open up a store and do illustration you know anyways like that's that's my first love she went down uh got tickets to the concert and went down and brought a poster and was like can i sing with you and he was like yeah and i was like that's if there is i don't know about a higher power or a god or anything but if there is no bigger proof of the universe just being like you're okay kid that's Mm. it's like you getting your dream after essentially giving up on your dream. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. you know, so it was that's amazing. It was I, I would have loved to see someone who can't sing, bring a similar sign and just like wreck in the middle of a song. Oh, like yeah. you see, there's that clip of Beyonce. Yeah. And she gives the mic to some chick in the crowd and she's just flat out of key. Yeah. Oh, something hilarious. Well, it about happened. That, we went to, we went to London after she sang with that. I was like, Oh, well you got to go to every other concert that he's, you know, just in case he recognizes. Like, remember you. me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we went down to London and it was like, that exact thing happened like this girl sang fever and like forgot half the words was like uh, ho- horribly out of tune and taylor was the he's only like, Do one you have a fever right now <laughs> yeah yeah well he was doing like this thing called like the shower song where he'd let you sing like 30 seconds of a tune uh. um and you on your own she was the only one for that entire tour to sing a full song with him into wow. his microphone on stage not with a special microphone pre-covid and it was, i'm guessing though. yeah yeah and they did a duet together like they sang to the song together it was yeah the photo out. they were like sitting right next oh yeah to each it's other. on youtube you can just type oh in, yeah you just i didn't type in i didn't actually see the video taylor angus singing with michael buble and it's like it's unreal it brings me to cool. tears every time i watch it because i'm so proud of her and i love i love her singing obviously that's like, amazing you know, man. So, yeah it's very cool i'm feeling bad now because earlier when we were talking about um you being in a dark period i was like so when you uh discovered like comedy you finally had something to live for yeah, <laughs> i yeah, feel yeah. like kind of terrible now we're talking about your spouse yeah. but that's one of those things that does happen when people are really in the dumps suffering from depression or or god forbid suicidal thoughts yeah is is the spouse can think it's their fault or then yeah, some yeah. reflection of them and it really often is has nothing to do with that person yeah. if like, anything i felt like a burden truthfully yeah I, exactly I, especially with adhd man you get so many mood swings so many ups and downs of yeah. like and no in between it's like borderline manic with you your feel like excitement baggage. for things and then you know bo- like they call it executive dysfunction where you like get into this like almost paralysis state of just like like when you when you're depressed y- your brain is like oh you're sad and you're shit and you know what i mean so it's like your brain is is rationalizing like all of these things like oh i'm sh- i suck yeah whereas to like, try to explain why you feel so down yeah whereas like executive dysfunction is like your brain's fine and it's being like you shouldn't be like this right now you have to get up you have shit that you got to do you've got to go do the dishes you've got to you know you can't be scrolling on your phone right now but you just can't do it uh, you know, it's I've like, had a few moments like that. Yeah, for sure. it's it's really like I, I don't want to say being trapped in your body because that's how people describe things like ALS, which is like I could not yeah. imagine. Like that is a nightmare situation. Or what's um wasn't Lou Gehrig's disease like that? Where yeah. Can't... If, oh, it is the same thing. Yeah. Okay, my bad, my bad. No, no, they changed it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's it's uh it's it's awful. And and again, like in feeling like that again, I felt like a burden because I mean Taylor would go to work. And I'd have the, you know, I get weekends off at Canada Post. So she'd go to work and then she'd come back and I've done nothing, not a mm. thing. Cause I'm like, well, she's like, why didn't you do the dishes? I'm like, well, I can't do the dishes until I've had breakfast and I can't have breakfast until I brush my teeth and I can't brush my teeth until I've had a shower mm. and I'm not having a shower today. The chain so reaction kind of, hasn't started yeah, yet. Like I can't, yeah. so I'm, I didn't do anything, you know? Well, there's something so um, scary about feeling like your brain is telling you one thing, but you can't put it into oh, yeah. into motion. Like we were yeah. talking about this before the podcast, you know, uh, like I haven't had any beer now in a week, which I just trying to do like a, you know, healthy September. Ooh. Yeah. Because I, uh, like I was telling you, I've never really had issues with drinking where I'm like blacking out and hitting rock bottom, like maybe in my life in my early twenties or something. But like in recent years, I've always been able to keep it like at a, a reasonable level, but the frequency was what I wasn't a fan of. And the, and the, like it not really feeling like my choice, you right. know, like we were talking about. And and there is something so strange about like going and paying for like a six pack or whatever. And there's some internal voice just being like, why? Like you drank last night. What are you doing? Take a fucking night off or whatever, you know, yeah. maybe not even a six pack, like four beers or whatever it was. But just 
even if it's just one beer, yeah, just feeling like I don't really want to do this, but I'm still doing it. What am I doing? You know, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's this hypnotic thing. I don't know. See, that's me with McDonald's right now because I, I have to drive past the Carlton Place McDonald's, which is the greatest McDonald's of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Like the fries are out of this world. I don't know what they're putting. Never in been. Those I don't know. I can't speak specifically. to that. Um, but I have like I have like a. It started out as a victory burger. You know what I mean? Like I'd get like a victory meal, and then it was like. Well, I bom- if I bombed or I had a, a subpar set, I'm like, yeah, well, the burger will make me feel better. Commiseration so You know what I mean? Yeah. And then now it's like, you're driving by there, baby. Like, you know, yeah. who cares, man? Yeah, What's yeah. 10 bucks for a couple of McDoubles? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, so now I have to... I, I, Alex Wood would prefer that I did not attribute this to him because it's an AA thing, but it's because of Alex Wood that I know about this. Uh, with play the tape out. Yeah. Is I, I go, well, what am I going to do? You know, I'm Where, gonna what the, is this going to lead to? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get the burger. I'm going to feel like shit because I had the burger. I'm going to wake up the next day feeling like shit because I had the burger. Feeling I'm gonna, guilty. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have this pit in my stomach all day that's both guilt and the fact that I just crushed two McDoubles at two in the morning. Horrible chemicals yeah, just invading yeah, your so. system. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's helped me quite a bit. But well, I'm glad you're on a better path, man. Yeah. Um, we've reached the turning point though of both my sheet of notes, but also it's from the let's learn about Logan part of the podcast to the here's a bunch of fun stuff to ask you. Cool. So uh, I'll do a brief intermission where I ask my dad if he has any questions for you. I don't know if you had anything prepared, but no. All right. Well yeah. then, that was a very brief intermission. Um, I wanted to ask you because I saw that you were featured. Well, I don't know if featured is the right word, but you appeared on the Bad Friends podcast, <laughs> and I'm a big fan of Whiskey Ginger and yeah. and Santino in general. Bobby yeah. Lee, I got nothing against either, but Santino's my man. I, I find yeah. him just hilarious. Yeah. Um, so how did that go down? Was it like a contest or something? Yeah, I don't even remember what it was. It was like fly. You, you're gonna fly out and party with Bobby on his fiftieth birthday, oh. and it was like. It preferred that you were sober, which I was, or at least that you drink in moderation and you aren't going to be crazy and that you're going to be there as a fan. You don't want to be a liability. Yeah, yeah. you're not just going to show up in L.A., and then like get Where's to the, the party limo? and then fuck off. You know what I yeah, mean? Like yeah. you got to hang by the bad friends crew. And I was like, yeah, of course. Of course like like yeah. Santino is one of my favorite comedians. I like Bobby Lee a lot too. I think Bobby Lee gets a bad rap as a comedian because people just put him in that category with the L.A. comics that like overact or like do like these grand act outs yeah. without a shit ton of material. Oh, he's a bizarre person. He's, but he's funny. He is shit, very funny. Like, and he truly loves comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, yeah. So I, I was a fan and I just took all my clothes off except for my underwear. And then I just filmed hiked them up too. Yeah. Yeah. I hiked him, <laughs> hiked him way up. My mother-in-law gave me a call afterwards and she's like, I didn't really need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to see your, your um, meat. But uh, yeah, yeah, and then I, I actually I got on, but it was it, they did another lockdown in LA, so that he oh, ended up shit. just partying on his own, and nobody, nobody. Got oh, so you would have been flown out? Yeah, I would have been no flown way. out. Yeah. Oh, what a fucking bummer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I look at it as because I I would have wanted to talk comedy, and yeah. then I was like, I'm ready, and now I'm in the headset of like, I'm ready. I'm not ready at all. I know oh, you're way more ready than you would have been if you had gone then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad. Like when I. My goal is to go down to LA at some point um, and hang out with these guys and do the comedy store. Like yeah. this is all bucket list type thing. Yeah, same here. And when I get down there, I want to be ready to go down there. Yeah. So that's it. Um, it's not that's the right approach. Yeah, yeah. Because imagine if right. you had been like, "Hey guys, I want to talk comedy." They're like, "Oh yeah, how, how long have you been doing it? Oh, three months." Exactly. They would have laughed exactly. the other room. You know? And if I don't have a spot where I can prove myself, and even still, like I mean, the states is like ruthless, especially places like LA, because it's a lot like our Toronto, where it's like. You so can, much competition. Oh, yeah, man. You can have a room full of people that, like, even if the joke's funny, don't laugh just because they don't like the cut of your jib. And mm. you're going to take, if they laugh too hard, you're going to take the spot from them. You know oh. what I mean? Like, that's like, it's not like that in Toronto. And I, I mean, as far as I know, I haven't done Toronto enough, but like, I've seen the clicky side of Toronto. And it's like, if, if Toronto is like a fraction of the size of LA. Yeah. So if it's a, if I'm even getting a vibe like that in Toronto, yeah. it's for sure there in LA. Well, I'm sure that like all comics from small towns are like super funny in their small town. Yeah. But if you're going to a place like the Comedy Store where they have so many amazing comedians, but even if they weren't amazing, just a variety of comedians that yeah. people probably don't give it up as easy, I would think, because they know that something more their style might be coming up next. You yeah, know, like, yeah, there's there's that for sure. I mean, like, as well, I've heard only from, like, like headliners that, that have done both, is that the comedy scene is so much stronger in Canada, but only because there's nothing here. Stronger like, meaning, like, tight-knit or, like... Uh, stronger as in, like, we're just better comedians. Oh, really? Like, we're just stronger comedians. Uh, allegedly, you know, this is just a, a, the opinions of some of the guys that I've talked to, but it's just... <laughs> some guys I'm 
LA guy's like, fuck you and your mustache. The, the goal here is, and there's like, obviously there's great com- comics in LA, you know, and people yeah. go to the States to make it because there's actually, you can you can actually make it down yeah. there. But that's why they're so good here is because you can work your whole life to be the best comedian that you can be. And your ceiling is like 45 grand a year as like a club comic or somebody that books their own shows. So you need to know that you're hot shit if you're going to go down to LA. Exactly. It's not going like, to work. You know, you've done it here for the love of comedy and for no other reason. You had no, like, because what is a yeah. show on CBC? Who cares? What is, you know what I mean? Like, like at, at the end of the day, like then you go over to the States with that energy of like, I just did it to do it the best that I possibly can. And then you've got guys that are going on stage because they hope to be will fucking smith's understudy or something mm. at you know what i mean like they're not doing it for the sake of doing comedy they're yeah. doing it because for the fame or the glamour yeah or... yeah i had a bit that i needed to work out because i've got a writing session tomorrow and i paid 45 grand to like take this acting class so i need to do stand up first in order to get you know what i mean and it's like all right a weird man. process yeah, yeah yeah it's like yeah okay dude like yeah <laughs> Okay, these next two uh, questions I'm going to ask, like, Dad, you can chime in with yours as well, because these are pretty open-ended, fun questions. Um, so the first one is, if you crash on a unexplored desert island, or let's not call it a deserted island, whatever, some sort of tropical thing in the middle of nowhere, uh, there's only three fruits and three vegetables that grow on the island, and that's what you're going to be eating. I mean, you could still hunt meat or whatever, but like, as far as your fresh produce, what what would you want to be growing? Oh, um, three, like three of each. Yeah. Three of each. Okay. For sure. Apples, kiwis, and maybe like, maybe like, like potassium. You'd want, you'd want banana in there. Fair. I didn't even sure. think about the chemical components. I was just going flavor in my head and oh. which is what I like the most. But yeah, that's a, a very valid point if you're like trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then for like, for vegetables, I'd probably do like, like you want like high fiber, high water shit. So I mm. would do like cucumber. I like, well, no, tomatoes are fruit. Fuck, tomatoes are fruit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's a lot of things that are fruit that I didn't think were when I started looking this up one day. I can't remember any other examples, but there were yeah. some pretty weird ones. Maybe like a sweet potato. Something like, a, like, yeah, I think a sweet potato probably. And like some type of lettuce, some type of like leafy green, like uh, spinach. spinach or something. Yeah, yeah. spinach or um, what's the one that tastes like licorice? I can't think of it right. Fennel. Like mm. fe- yeah, like that, I think that'd be that'd be kind of cool. I don't know, like that shit at all. Shake that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of like an herb. I don't know if that counts as a veggie. Is yeah, it? fair, fair. Yeah, then I guess spinach. spinach. Yeah, spinach is a solid choice, yeah. or kale, or something like that. Yeah, 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 something like that. What are you feeling? Well, first of all, kudos to Logan for scientifically thinking out a balanced diet. <laughs> you know, um, I was, you know what, bananas, apples, and blueberries. Oh, is blueberry just like a flavor preference? Or, or they're yeah, it's good antioxidants. antioxidants. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So well. th- those would be my fruits, and I'd go broccoli because because uh, I like broccoli, and it's good for you. Right. Um. What else? Uh, you know, because I don't like the starchy stuff. I gotta stay away from that. Like potatoes and shit. Yeah. Yeah, but but sweet potato is a good choice too. You know, it's yeah, lower it was, on the. I think they're the, healthy for you too. Lower on that uh, index, the the sugar breakdown index, and all that. No one's picking any of mine so far. I probably picked a terrible diet. Like I'm not going to go carrots or anything like that. And none of the root things. I like something. It's got to be like maybe it's spinach or kale. Although I really don't like kale unless it's. I like kale in a smoothie. <laughs> right. So right. do I have electricity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starting to feel have like you're a, actually ordering at a restaurant. Have I got a tiki bar? Sure <laughs> <laughs> Interesting yeah. choices though. Like uh, for fruits, I've got cantaloupe on there right away cantaloupe i love cantaloupe you like cantaloupe. melon is good for you as far as i know too it's pretty healthy well, it makes my throat itch that's why i don't eat some melons. people have reactions yeah. to kiwis as well a lot of tropical really? fruit um cantaloupe pineapple i oh, love pineapple one, yeah. i love pineapple too too much sugar though yeah i suppose we might need that sugar for energy right if we're stuck on an island it's supposed to be good for your semen though so that's a plus <laughs> that's yeah are yeah. you talking about the flavor differential not speaking personally but that's how you're yeah. getting your protein in there that's how yeah Dad's like, yeah, I could go for a glass. <laughs> um, I don't know. Third one, I would probably pick something from the berry family. Like blackberries right. are pretty badass. I, I like, like the texture too. of blackberries. I like those little round, you know, just the way it feels in your mouth. Right. Okay, I don't know what that says about you, but okay. I think texture is very important to the foods that texture you like. Texture is for sure. You know, well, your mom talks about that all the time. Texture is a, a big, big part of her meals. Yeah. And veggies, I don't know. I'd probably put onions. Oh yeah, good onions one. are, and I hated onions my whole life, but now God, you I just got to fry them, and suddenly everyone goes, "What's cooking?" Hey, <laughs> garlic is that a vegetable? 
Yeah, yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would probably take garlic too. Then yeah. I was wondering. I would never take ginger, but I was also wondering if that's. Oh, I like ginger a lot. Is yeah. that a vegetable? Yeah, it's a yeah. root vegetable, I guess. And uh, I mean, isn't a vegetable something you got to be able to like plop down on your plate a couple scoops and eat it? And I don't think you could do that with ginger. I thought vegetables always came from the ground because we were talking about this. And when I looked up peppers, they were technically fruits. I'm almost but because positive. they hang off the, the yeah plant. anything and, that comes from like a well no broccoli is a vegetable in it. You know, oh yeah, I suppose you don't, right? it's not a root vegetable. Yeah, that's true. I guess you know, peas. And there's a large majority of them that come from corn. Like I mean, See, I, I feel like we've talked about vegetables for a long time now. I wonder if people are tuned out. I thought it was seeds. I thought that was the defining because like oh that, seeds, yeah, maybe that's avocado it. Avocado yeah, yeah. is also a fruit or something like that. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I, I was Everyone wondering if this would be that. boring <laughs> or not, but I also thought this is a question where everyone would have an opinion. Right, everyone right, listening yeah. is like, oh, I wish I could tell them I yeah. would have chosen, you know, yeah. dragon fruit or whatever. Um, okay, so the next question, comic books. I mentioned Comic Con off the top, and obviously this room is, you know, strewn about with all different form of comic imagery. Um, so I, it got me thinking about I should ask a comic book question. What do you think is the coolest member of the Sinister Six and why? Oh. And just for people who aren't familiar or maybe have forgotten the members, we're going Doc Ock, Sandman, Electro, Vulture, Mysterio. And then for the final sixth member, I will accept either the original, which was Craven, or Hobgoblin as he quickly replaced him and became the mainstay after that. Oh, man. Because after that, they did like six other iterations of the Sinister Six with every Spider-Man villain you can think of. But this is the OG like crew, yeah. you know? I want to say Doc Ock because I'm such a Doc Ock fan. Um, but coolest? Or, well, yeah, I mean, or like who's your favorite, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah, I guess it would be Doc Ock. Doc yeah. Ock. I like a lot of the... <laughs> my dad and I used to get into debates like this because I'd always ask, like, who would win in a fight? And he'd be like, Depend, depends on who's writing them, you know? And it's like... So true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think there's like... I think Doc Ock has like defeated the Hulk once. And it's like, well, that's, there, yeah. That's there, not a That's thing. an amazing... Well, no, at the time he had adamantium tentacles. Oh, right. And right. that's why he kicked the shit out of the Hulk because yeah. he was slamming him with like Wolverine metal that yeah. couldn't be destroyed. And, yeah. you know, because I would imagine the original Doc Ock with regular whatever his arms are normally made out of, you would not want to tussle with the Hulk because there go your arms. Oh, yeah. Like, he's going like, to rip them out real quick. I remember for the longest time, like, not well, maybe not the longest time, but there was that brief run of Spider-Man comics where, like, Doc Ock had, like, would go into, like, PTSD, like, catatonic oh, really? states. Well, because Spider-Man had ripped off all of his arms. Which, uh, like, and they were, like, linked yeah, to Yeah, I mean, it's like, feels like getting your own arms oh, ripped shit, off. I didn't so know he this. would, like, he would freeze up and then the arms would just take over and, like, run away or Crazy. Like, wreak havoc. But the thing, like, the thing about Doc Ock, which is like something that's so funny to me, I used to have a joke about it and it worked, but I've just never been able to write funny comic book jokes to go into that, to turn it into a bit. Yeah. It's, he's just a guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's out of like, shape guy in most iterations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's so funny to me to think about like the sixties where Doc Ock first, like, you know, comes onto the scene as like this evil mastermind bowl cut. versus like now where he's probably got irreparable brain damage because he just needs to get punched once and he's knocked yeah. out. Like once Spider-Man gets through those arms, this guy's got CTE like a motherfucker. Yeah, but this is why he balanced himself out as far as like his power by being such a genius. Yeah. Because he yeah. always had the schemes. He always had the backup, the henchmen, yeah. the, you yeah. know, the alliances with Wilson Fisk or somebody like that, you know? Yeah. What do you like the most out of the Sinister Six, Dad? I've always been partial, I think, to Sandman. I, I like guys who have uh, one basic elemental power like that, like mm. Iceman Human or Torch. Sandman or Torch. Yeah, mm. Those guys have always appealed to me on some level. Even And I, what I like about Sandman is it's, it's sand. And you could just go, well, what's so good about sand? I mean, fire, that's something. Ice, that's really cool. But sand? But yet... I saw enough stories where, uh, man, you could suffocate a guy with yeah, sand. Choke you can, him out. Yeah, yeah. You can build uh, these hammer hands out of like sand, like concrete. You can I guess get ginormous in a lot of. Yeah, he can flow too. down the drain and he'll get dumped out somewhere, and he can be blown away in a breeze. I've yeah. seen him do that. That's too. the part that that bothered me always, though, because I'd seen some stories where he's just like scattered and. This ability to sort of coalesce those little. Where does the back, consciousness you know? reside yeah, when you're made up yeah. of like a bunch of? So I had trouble same. with accepting some of that stuff, but hey, but you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a comic. comic. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. But I, I like Sign Man. Yeah. There was also uh, what's the name Hydro Man, which was like yeah, the I same shit, Hydro but Man, made out yeah. of water. Yeah. And then at one point, I know there was this comic story where they like combined and became like this muck guy. Yeah. It was like yeah. a mud dude or something. I think the character name is actually Muck. No, oh, Clayface from DC. Yeah, it's oh, pretty yeah. much like that. That's a Muck Man. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably go Mysterio. 
I don't know. Just I was th- something Mysterio about now is like way cooler than he was back. That then. fucking sequence in Far From Home, yeah, is yeah. probably one of my favorite things I've seen in any superhero movie ever. Yeah, they, they just did it so well, where Spider Man keeps falling and banging into shit because he doesn't know what's real. Yeah, yeah. And then even at the end, he psychs him out by thinking Nick Fury's there, but it's still him. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Man. That was really well done. So well done. Yeah. It was like straight ripped out of a comic book. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, Tom Holland's great as Spider Man and all that already. I yeah. think everyone agrees, but that. Was was one of the best moments on film from a comic i think for sure yeah, yeah. um okay what's uh what's the last last gift you gave someone Ooh, uh last the gift of laughter like, Every i week knew you were gonna say i knew he was gonna say that um no last gift something you wrapped up yeah um i'm trying to think like what it would have been my girlfriend's birth because we we like to gift experiences more than stuff because her like her okay, family's okay. pretty well off so it's like there's nothing i could get her that like sure, if she has was like a, a pony or something yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like if she's in dire need of something for like work she's she's got it as far as i'm concerned um so but, you get like concert tickets or something or yeah like, yeah like yeah. concert tickets or like you know we'll just like spend the day together at like canada's wonderland or something like nice. that i got her a 3d printer uh, a couple christmases ago and like i get her like tchotchke stuff like you know she's into that that bunny girls and stuff like somehow that, so. i feel like a couple christmases ago hopefully is not the last present you gave yeah, otherwise yeah, you I'm, fucked up last I, christmas i really am trying to think of like the last gift that i got her but it's hard to get like it's a hard thing to think of on the yeah, spot. There's, there's I had no not, idea how this no, question no, no, there's, was going to go. No, no, there's just not a lot of, like, we, we're not. We're or what's se- a gift you, you gave in your life that you were most proud of? How about that? Oh. Something where you really made an impact on the, the gift receiver that made you feel, you know, welled up with joy kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, where you were like, I'm thoughtful as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Because that is a great feeling. As much as that still sort of makes it selfish in the end that you're doing it to feel good about the gift you're giving a little bit. Yeah, But yeah. it is a great feeling, you know? My I got my dad one year when I was still living at home a picture of the Hulk drawn by Dan Day, who like he was he was um, he worked for Marvel for quite like he worked for Stanley for quite some time. Okay, but he's a baker at Tim Hortons now because that's where all good artists in the in, <laughs> that's that's where the Canadian art, artist industry. But he drew right Marvel now. comics. Though. Yeah, yeah, oh, cool. and he was never like he was always a, like an uh, he was never a colorist, but uh, penciler or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, it, but it was it was still I mean still an artist, so it was oh, of course it was phenomenal. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was like really cool. Cause my, I mean, it was like specifically made, it was a totally original drawing of the Hulk for my dad. Like that was like, and he was familiar with the artist before that. You think? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Even cooler. So, yeah. So it was like, it was, that was, that was pretty cool. I was yeah. I'd say that's like, that's, that's probably a great gift. A 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. Nice man. Okay. Uh, what do most folks misunderstand about you? Most uh, frequently they think I'm like, <laughs> They they think that the the version of myself that I present myself as is the the version of myself that I always am. Like when I first like because I'd lived for quite some time with my mother in law. Like she's got two properties, so like we would float back and forth between the two of them. And I'm I would say like seventy five percent of the time on and like a good guy to like fun to hang around. But there are times when like if I get unsettled in a situation where I'm like I'm not. It, like you don't want to be around me and I'm not like aggressive. Like I don't retaliate, like I don't attack people or anything like that. No, and no. I'm certainly not mean, but I'm definitely not a good time. And it's, mm. I don't like, I don't like showing that side of myself to anyone, but if you're around me long enough, you're just going to see it because I'm comfortable with you. And that's the worst part about it is like, mm. eventually I just get so comfortable that all the walls come down and I stop masking. Cause I'm pretty sure like, I, I don't have the blood tests or anything like that. Um, and my doctor could do a better job of, like, trying to pursue this aspect of it. It's because I've voiced it as a concern to him enough times. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the spectrum. Okay. And there's no way to get medicated for that. But you can learn coping mechanisms, especially through your doctor. And I've had to do them, learn those mechanisms through TikTok and shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit because he just refuses to help. Um, and, Maybe switch uh, doctors if you could. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm really lucky to have a. I think he's ten out of ten with everything else. Okay. So it's like this this one thing I can kind of let slide, but it's cause it's not super debilitating, but it is enough that it's like, hey, once you see that, just know that like sometimes I am this guy. Okay. It's not like a Hulk situation, but it's more like a, I don't know. I don't a little know bit temperamental at times. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially like, especially if shit gets moved and I have like in my head where it's supposed to be, mm. or like I'm not like I get that the way sometimes with like plans like when things are i'm really amped up about something and oh, then yeah. plans just like it's you know thrown off the last minute yeah, yeah. it takes me a, a bit to adjust sometimes if it was something i was really looking forward to and yeah, you know yeah. you feel that kind of like rug pulled out from under your feet yeah yeah my girlfriend's like that yeah it feels like like 
if plans change like without you know, and then the like, next day you look back like oh god i was i was totally oh, overreacting dude, you know yeah 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 so it's like that that's because like right now we're um like she had to so she had a really bad panic attack uh, like four or five nights ago no not even would have been uh yeah maybe six nights ago and had a seizure from it like oh, the, shit. the panic attack was so bad that it, it put her into like almost like a seizure like state where i couldn't couldn't physically move her like she was like Crazy. it's like i don't know if you've ever like picked up someone that's like unconscious but it, it felt uh, like harder than that and she's like she's little you know like wow. she's, she's not a she's like she's not a not but it was like yeah. rigor mortis or yeah, something yeah ex that's exactly what it was crazy and uh so her doctor was like you need a service dog like you can't just be you need something to pull you out of that because like like or start you, barking so people know like yeah this like woman we, needs we help. can't train people to like deal with that like that's a severe that's mm. not like a oh wiggle your toes and get someone to rub your back and tell you that everything's okay like that's like you need an animal so we're in a situation where we actually might have to legally fight our condo board because they're like we don't like dogs wow. um, which is you know you'll totally win if you have a service yeah, certificate as, as or whatever from what we've we've researched and what to, actually shout out to lorenzo patino because he's helped us a lot in this situation um, right but uh the uh like ontario human rights trumps anything like it's like you know no smoking well if i have a cigarette and if i don't you know nobody has service cigarettes so that's a terrible example <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, nobody gets service darts um but uh yeah like the ontario human rights trumps anything in in any landlord thing so well, people uh, can bring them on planes and, yeah exactly well so, matt was telling us uh matt o'brien was saying they just bring their dog on and it's not even a service animal yeah. it's just small enough and it's quiet enough yeah yeah so i'm sure it'll be fine but we're in this situation right now where it's like i we can't be at the apartment while all this paperwork is getting filed with the dog and taylor has to be with the dog to help with the dogs like training with the you know to get this the certificate and everything like that so i'm bouncing between these two different places like at my mother-in-law's place to spend time with my you know with my wife to be and everything like that and mm. to go home and do any type of work and get clothes and i'm because of that i've you know perpetually over these last like couple of days have just been in this like fucking i want to run into a building right now and i want to <laughs> i want to do a 50 or like 100 yard dash in a 50 just yard pent room. Up, like, oh yeah, yeah yeah it's just been brutal but journaling helps with that oh so so fiance i didn't even realize yeah that. yeah i mean like we've been fiance and same here a long and time. it's such a fucking annoying word so i totally yeah, get it yeah that's why i normally say girlfriend or partner because i'm woke yeah partner it's i guess the most neutral term yeah yeah, yeah. but i almost feel like even though it's supposed to be neutral if you're a guy and you say partner, yeah. it's like instantly assumed that it's a dude you're talking about. That. Yeah, yeah. Or I suppose even a woman. Anytime someone says partner, I think it's more often people will go like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's a reason they chose that word. Yeah. You yeah. know, even See, if you're just a regular, not regular, but um, <laughs> I don't want to say old fashioned. <laughs> I know. You know, know what I mean? You I know, know what I'm saying? Mean, regular yeah. was a terrible choice of word. No, I apologize no. for that. No, no, but, no, no. Um, I know what you get. No. Run of the mill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. If it's, uh, a, if it's a heterosexual. Classic? Yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> classic sounds like uh, yeah. a little too self-serving. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I just say partner because I'm hard to live with. So it's definitely a partnership. At there this you point. go. Yeah. It honestly <laughs> is the best term overall for that exact reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, you can say yours for this, Dad, too, because I'd be interested to know your answer. But uh, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten? Oh. That stuck with you and you were just like, fuck, yeah. That... Oh, it's got to be anything. Like, right now, anything, anytime anybody told me that I'm funny. You yeah. know, like, I've, I've had, although, you know what, Trevor Thompson the other day which it means so much to me that trevor said this because he's always like such a and, and i like he's such a curmudgeon sometimes yeah he has that um image yeah. i don't think it's that true i think he's no, a really, really he's, nice he's guy. a sweetheart man but the other don't day don't tell anyone will ruin his character <laughs> the other day we did a, a road gig in renfrew with jesse reynolds and it was oh, trevor nice. and i was hosting and trevor said to me yeah logan's a really easy i can't believe you've never met logan he's a really easy guy to get along with and I was that like, sounds like trevor <laughs> fucking thank you man like that was yeah that that one well, I'm still bringing it up right now, so that <laughs> yeah, that compliment obviously stuck with me. That's but, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was that was probably the best one. You could do a Trevor, I think, if you you oh, kind of had sure. his cadence a lot. I don't think you were trying to, but yeah. when you did Trevor there just a second ago, it sounded yeah. kind of a little bit like him. Yeah. Um, what do you, Dad? Do you have a compliment from your entire life or career that just really like it's a lot of years? Um, <laughs> well, I don't tell me when the mom gave you. I don't need to know that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the engine or something like <laughs> you know your old man's great yeah, in the sack yeah that's it <laughs> i'm gonna grab another drink you you answer this though so uh, i the the ones that i've had a few times that seem to sit with me and i don't 
like it in one way because I don't want people to think I have a big head or anything. But when people you tell have me a big head, I inherited it. When, when people large. tell me that I'm smart, oh yeah, I've had a few people say you are so smart, and like they really meant it. I could tell, and I and I it it made me feel good. Yeah. Um, and then the but a lesser one that I've had also a few times in my life now is people say you've got a voice for radio oh, oh yeah. that's yeah have you ever gotten that specifically from this show doing this this show i have never received anything for this show <laughs> like you mean feedback no i meant like someone saying after they heard you speaking on this show in the way that you do like oh you've got a great voice i, I could have sworn a guest has said i think i think one time someone mentioned yeah something. someone said something during an episode and it's weird because it's one of those things where when you listen to your own recorded voice you go Oh, I sound horrible. I, I don't. Know. I don't have that anymore. I got over that shit a long. You got time. over that. Oh, I still. I'm, maybe because I don't listen to my recorded voice very. Often. What I'll criticize myself for when I'm watching, you know, editing or whatever after is like being a little too casual, where sometimes mm. not not really slurring your speech, but you know when you don't like enunciate that much, yeah. oh, because yeah. you're just like hanging with a friend or whatever. So instead of saying probably, I'll say probably or something like that. You oh, know, yeah. like I catch that kind of stuff and I go, oh, be a little more professional, you fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, see, I'm the opposite. I find that I'm like too. I try to be too professional when I'm talking. Yeah, like you were saying with your CBC interviews. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. So now I just try to. But that's good though. Like that's yeah. what will get you a job, you know. I For sure. I made the choice when we started the show of being like it's going to be uncensored cuz I think I think I really have always struggled with like quote unquote day jobs right. because I don't like being told what to do. I don't <laughs> really love rules oh, and I know. And like something as simple as starting a podcast and being like I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want is like yeah. so liberating. Oh yeah. I, I mean I I watch to some degree. I don't want to offend people or hurt people's For feelings, sure, but yeah. general swearing with, with good intent. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. Although apparently I do have to pay attention to some degree because, uh, when you want to get monetized for episodes, you have to like, agree that you're not putting this, that, or the other thing. And most of the stuff I, with swearing, I think is if it's like a bunch of F bombs in like the first minute of your video, if they're oh. like in the episode later, I don't think they care as much, but they don't want something that right off the bat is like, is this with YouTube or YouTube? Yeah. Oh, okay. And they also ask like drug stuff. And, and actually I noticed this, I was going through all my, you know, content or whatever. and just looking at the statistics, whatever you get curious sometimes. And then I realized that there's two or three episodes of the show that aren't monetized anymore, even though I put them up for monetization and it was the ones that were about weed. Really? Yeah. I had a girl on episode I don't know, 13, I think it was. And she was like an edible chef. And then more recently I had uh, two women that were, uh, the first was a woman too. I shouldn't have said a girl. Yeah. Um, but uh, more recently two women that were co-owning and operating a, uh, like a weed shop in town. That right, just opened. right. And both those episodes uh, are flagged. Yeah. Right. Wow. Although yeah. surprisingly, I don't think the Tommy Chong one got it where we were smoking I was joints. Ask the whole you, time. Like, was, was Rita's thing like take it down or? Yeah, no, I don't yeah, think, weird. I think that one's still monetized too. Weird. Weird. Maybe because the other people were doing it, there was mention from like a business perspective. Because right. even the first girl, she was like an edible chef, but I think she could could it be from a complaint? Maybe, but I think it might be if you're trying to like legitimize it in certain ways. I don't know. I, like I really don't know. These girls on the podcast, man, thought it was for the boys. <laughs> 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 well, I don't think that matters as much. No, but. I don't think it matters either. I was just being a dickhead. Yeah. <sighs> Shit. Yeah. Um, where are we at? I got to check these notes. I know I got a couple other good ones. Oh. Uh, oh, worst job you've ever had. Worst job I ever had? I worked for my mom. <laughs> yeah. Like right before Take I... Take that, mom. Yeah. yeah. No. I, well, I worked... Uh, she is like the general manager of... There's some fucking term for it, of uh, one of those on routes. So the Odessa and the... Napa oh, the yeah, yeah. And I worked at Burger King and Kentucky Fried Chicken at those places. And she was just that like... That sounds like a bad job. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, and that it sounds was, phenomenally it was bad. so funny because like... I was the only black kid working at Kentucky Fried Chicken and it was Kentucky Fried Chicken Taco Bell and my manager was the only Mexican dude and we were just like, what the fuck is going like, <laughs> I feel like, I don't want to say that we're being racially profiled, but I feel like for the sake of this company's PR, I have to go work at Tim Hortons. Like yeah. I can't, or can't let's switch. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I was the worst chicken cook. I fed a guy a heart one time. Um, oh, like oh, deep dude, fried it? Yeah. Well, I didn't know you're supposed to, you're supposed to clean the chicken. Who would have thought at Kentucky Fried Chicken, they actually are the yeah. real chicken that you have to I would have assumed of. it all came pre-breaded. Yeah, yeah. Like no, chicken it's, nuggets it's, you have to bread it and like legit make it. And I oh. did not clean a uh, a breast or something like that, a rib or something like that. And I mm. served a guy a heart. 
I had a friend told me they got an eyeball or something once. Yeah, yeah. Blue. No, it's they're they're legit chicken. If you, can, if you can believe it, yeah. So that was uh, that's probably the worst job, but just because like it's fast food, man. Yeah, it was like it was a fast food thing, and I like I worked a fast food job um, that I'm sure was shitty at times when there was rushes and it was crazy busy or whatever. But yeah. overall, it was actually pretty sweet because it wasn't a big franchise restaurant. It was oh. in the Saint Laurent shopping mall. Yeah, this would have been circa like. I don't know, early 2000s, because I was in high school when I got that job, I think grade 11 or 12 or something. Yeah. And uh, it was just called Hot Dog. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> it was like this lady who was kind of a grump, but she, she had like a bunch of kids and she ran it all on her own. Yeah. And uh, I think she actually worked for this other guy who was like this Dutch immigrant guy with a right. thick accent who also owned the Beaver Tails there. Yeah. And then eventually he like amalgamated them into some weird place called Hot Dog Beaver Tails. And wow. it was... Uh, but it was a good job because most of the time it was like me and one of my other friends who worked there right. dead, like nothing going on. We put back, you know, back in 20 minutes, sign up and go yeah. like get high in the stairwell and then come back and make ourselves like whatever the fuck we wanted. Like it was pretty cool. Imagine in that you respect. guys only serve like pad thai. <laughs> oh my God. A hot dog. And it's like fucking, we don't have any of that. Just here. to mess with people. Yeah. 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 Um, I can't. Oh, what uh, is a movie that you think everyone has to see at least once in their life? Oh, um, I'm sure you have probably a few floating around already. Ooh, but yeah, yeah. If you like getting stoned, Pink Floyd's The Wall, I think, because like that's that's mm. that is that's like um, I don't know. That <laughs> I saw it once. I was gonna say that's like a Blumpkin man, like you're shitting while coming at the same time. But it's like <laughs> it's a movie. Wow, it's like music. It's it, like there's a visual aspect to yeah. it, and it's like that's especially if you like to get stoned, like that's. That's like scratching two itches at once. Like I saw that in high school, and I'm sure we were stoned. And I remember being very confused by the actual narrative of what was going on. Yeah, but maybe I just wasn't paying attention. It's definitely out there for okay. sure. And then like Spirited Away, I would say that's a, that's. A I really want to check that out now. Yeah, should watch that. I think it's great. You don't watch the dub version though. That's the problem with like because the actors don't deliver the same performance that in the language that it's originally written. Just do the subtitles. Yeah, yeah, yeah just do the subtitles. It's usually better. Yeah. 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 Um. I, I'm throwing to you again on that one because I mean, honestly, we haven't done an in-person podcast in like a month, I think, and I'm glad you're here for this one. So it's a bit of a mini dad interview too. So what movie you say? One of the ones that was always something I appreciated was the original Blade Runner. I've still never seen oh, it. Oh, yeah. Because it's got a important message, I think, about the value of life. Yeah, Rutger yeah. Hauer's speech at the end of that is like, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Piv pivotal, yeah. Fuck, I really got to watch that movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a good movie. Great movie. I've heard about it so many times, just like some so many other famous movies, Replicants. Yeah. Like, I know yeah. some of the plot, but... You know what? Shout out to, like, sci-fi, comic book villains. Like, mm. villains deliver some of the most poignant... Like, if, if it's really well written and you can, like, see their perspective for 99% of the film, yeah. it's like damn like even thanos man let's like especially living in the as a millennial or gen i don't know what I, i'm 26 so i think i'm like at the tail end of millennial at the beginning of gen z or whatever i think you're past millennial but it's like yeah. seeing the way that the world is and seeing like how not how easily like nothing is easy to solve especially for eight billion people but like seeing the solution right in your face and the problem right in your face and like 17 guys with a billion dollars just not willing to do anything about it is yeah. like man give me those infinity stones i'll snap my face like i'll snap two at once man i'll start doing this thing like yeah but uh, maybe not kill everyone just like redistribute everything oh yeah you know? man yeah yeah it's yeah definitely the new um yeah. i just saw the new thor movie and and the villain in that was very like you feel for him oh for sure yeah. he's um the whole movie kind of spoiler alert the whole movie starts with him uh on earth somewhere i guess and and he's uh or maybe it's another planet i honestly don't know where his story starts but he's got his little daughter in some sort of desert climate yeah crazy sandstorms and they're just dying dehydrated mm -hmm. whatever so he prays to the gods but his daughter dies in his arms and then eventually he finds some sort of weird oasis which it turns out is like some godly place because there's some the god he worships is just like chilling in there yeah and he's like oh you didn't answer my prayers or whatever and the god basically like laughs in his face yeah. and like so his whole movie he's trying to kill all the gods basically because of that but you feel for him it's like yeah absolutely yeah. anyways yeah uh, that was recent you, you still haven't seen that either no yeah you should yeah. check it out honestly i was pretty happy because ragnarok i thought was way too comedy 
Like right. I, I don't hate Taika Waititi or whatever. And I enjoyed many parts of it, yeah. but I remember thinking like, especially with the storyline of like Asgard's being destroyed, yeah. all your family members are dying. Yeah. Maybe let's not make yeah. it a comedy so much. It like, definitely saved Thor though. I mean, the dark it world did. sucked so bad. Yeah. So well, like, yeah, but he was kind of saved by the Avengers and like the, the sure. larger pictures with, with, just where he was one of the cast. Yeah. yeah. I admit the solo movies were a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. the first one where they dyed his eyebrows blonde. It just oh, looks so weird when God. you go back and watch it. Yeah, it's rough. rough um, sure. But the new one I went into being like terrified because everyone online was saying, oh, it's Ragnarok. He just doubled down on the same thing. And I yeah. found like it had some of that flavor, but I actually found it much more sort of Oh, even cool. toned cool i mean yeah. you never know until you do a rewatch a couple months later and yeah yeah the theater experience is always kind of unique yeah yeah it's just nice to get back into the theater and be able to watch like last movie i saw in the theater so was antlers that uh, guillermo del toro horror film i think that, i sort of know great. what you're talking about that was no great. no no i'm just like i don't know man I'm, I'm old school with my monster movies like i don't need it to be an allegory for depression just mm. show me a cool fucking monster yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like let me see godzilla and let godzilla not be like a metaphor for childhood <laughs> trauma yeah know what i mean oh there's one fucking movie i don't want to forget this because you have to check it out it's with jason sudeikis and um oh my god who's the woman in that movie i'm totally blanking i want to say it was his wife olivia wilde but i'm probably wrong on that but anyways he um it's a movie all about some giant monster kaiju type thing oh but it's like every time it's linked to him somehow or something like yeah. every time he goes to sleep and, or, and and uh and hathaway. hathaway and hathaway yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, oh yeah. my god that would have driven me nuts but that was a really cool interesting movie and then eventually she has a monster that's linked to her or something yeah, yeah. if i'm not mistaken yeah and i think that the allegory is alcoholism isn't it it's like every time yeah, she gets drunk it's when they right. pass it's out or something yeah 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 that yeah. was totally it yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't remember what it's called though at all it had a weird name i haven't watched the film but i heard kevin smith interview the director mm. on uh, on his podcast they have like a um they have a close relationship because the he the the Spanish director who like made that movie that what was I forget the name of that was it Jumper or Looper with uh, with Bruce Willis where he, yeah yeah, yeah, it was yeah, Looper. yeah 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 that Jumper was with the guy who played um uh, it was Hayden Christensen oh, that right. was like a teleporting movie yes, yeah. yeah yeah so so the plot for Looper was stolen from that guy oh. and so he wrote this after to be like well fucking whatever i'll just write something they'll know i'll write something so wild they'll never want to steal it and then it becomes this huge like cult class <laughs> wow yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah. yeah no it was uh something i stumbled upon yeah just i was like oh i like jason sudeikis yeah you know i yeah. wish i could do a jason sudeikis yeah it's it's a hard impression to do i heard someone do it recently i think it was on pete holmes podcast and it was like perfect oh yeah it was a lot of they were talking about how he um uh, not to just copy that podcast but they were talking about how he does a lot of like thinking out loud right, oh, right. so we're uh, just gonna you know yeah and uh I, I, that's not it i'm right, not right. getting it all but anyways uh, <laughs> that devolved into nothing uh okay last thing i'm gonna ask you cool second last actually but this is the season three question which is uh you probably know it what oh. did you want to be when you were growing up or alternatively uh what would you want to be doing as a dream job now if you couldn't do what you're currently doing oh okay. or both if you feel like answering both yeah i mean like if if a scientist, I guess. Yeah, I was really into, which is actually goes back to the comic book thing. Um, I was super into like doing the, th I was a huge Dr. Doom fan when I was a kid. Oh, cool. And I really wanted to make like an Iron Man suit. And so I like, I was pretty decent at math. I mean, I was never like a physics guy, but I was like trying to go down that path until the arts kind of, mm. you know, kind of crept in. But you um, might've gone into like engineering or. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted to make like Doc Ock arms, but my dad was like, there's no way that's not possible because it's the human spine is what's going to happen. And my dad drives trains for a living and like is also a high school dropout. So like, I don't know why he was like explaining to me the physics of this. But he was like, yeah, the human spine would still have to bear the load. So no matter how much the arms could lift, your spine is still going to have to take all that. So you can't lift anything over your head. So it would just be, I'm like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, I see what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If you picked up a bus, it would still. Well, all be. <laughs> yeah, but he's got four arms and two can be used to brace because he can lift himself in the air. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he can actually transmit the weight th from one pair of arms through the other pair. It of all arms really depends on the, on the mechanical strength. I'm about of to the quit arms, comedy and go back and make titanium arms. <laughs> I, just, I just want to do a podcast debating superhero shit. Yeah. I'm sure we've done snippets of it before, but honestly, it's not for all the listeners, but I've always enjoyed uh, yeah, yeah. those needless debates. Like you oh, were yeah, saying. Cause I always get into like, how would this work? Like as you were talking about with uh, Sandman, I would never want that power because mm. like the effect of you, anytime you went full on sand form, like, your consciousness being split so like a billion yeah. little particles. Oh, that would be awful. Be weird. That would be the worst thing. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, 
uh, Professor X's ability to just read minds. Yeah, like the terrible. You know, great now that he's like in his 60s and can control that. But the yeah. first like, you know, because they get that power, they get their powers at puberty. You generally like, you'd speaking, have to, yeah. like, you'd have to. Apparently that's why he's bald too. All his hair fell out when he got his mental powers. Oh yeah, like that would, that would just drive me nuts. You know? Yeah, I, I would never pick mind reading. In season one, I, that was a question we asked guests at the end was uh, like, what superpower would you want? And I always yeah. thought that was a terrible answer. Magnetism because... all, all the way. I really? Think, I think that's the best one because it's, it's got all the, the perks of telepathy. We have iron in our blood. Yeah, why not so just can... take full on telekinesis then? Because then I you can th move anything, not just metal. Because I think with telekinesis would come that like the mind thing of, uh, you know, like of the, the telepathy. So it's like, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want Jean Grey's thing. Of No, like... those are separate powers though. Yeah? She just happened okay. to have both. Oh, okay. Fair. She was a telekinetic who was dabbling in telepathy and learning how to right. use that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it got nerdy again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what did you want to be growing up? Growing up? Um, comedian, I guess, or? Yeah, yeah, com yeah, comedian, I think. Yeah, it was just, nine, you said you got yeah, those yeah, aspirations. Yeah, I did a, I did a school project on Andy Kaufman. And oh, since that, wow. Yeah, I'm really, it's really hard for me to like, I can write jokes because I know the formula now. And it's like, it's just going to be, because my X factor is the performance. Like I would say as a performer, I'm probably like a B plus, A minus. And as a joke writer, it's more like a C plus, B minus. Mm. But that'll catch up because like the performance is already what is what's getting me notoriety and having people take me seriously. And then the joke writing will catch up to that the more that yeah, I do it. with frequency. And but I know the formula to like how to write a proper joke and like how to, t mm. you know, suspend disbelief and catch people's attention with with a, either a premise or like something that takes t catches you off guard. Yeah. But I was always, what makes it so hard for me to write a joke that makes me laugh is that I'm so into alt humor that like the idea of somebody just going, here I come to save the day. Yeah. And like using that as He was the OG <laughs> alt comic really, right? Especially now of how hard, uh, how uh, how hard it is to get on late night television. Yeah. He did a, <laughs> he's five minutes on Saturday Night Live at the time, the biggest show. Everybody was glued to their TV sets and he does every Mouse. Saturday. And he does Mighty Mouse for yeah. five minutes. And and doesn't move a muscle until the here I come to save the day. And just ki like, that is the funniest thing. It's, He's got to be uh, one of the like original alt comics, oh, right? I mean, sure. Steve Martin a little bit. For sure, He yeah. did a lot of that kind of bizarre yeah. stuff sometimes. Yeah. And I'm sure there's comics from like previous eras that I'm blanking on here, yeah. but yeah, really like the absurdest kind of comedy of like, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they had to like do stuff like that. Cause it was all, uh, it was all performance art. There was no con like comedy is a relatively new art form. And back in the day they had to tour with like musicians. There yeah. were no comedy clubs, like, you it was know, like vaudeville and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all the crap, cause like for every, there's so many of us now there's, uh, and, and I understand, especially if you want to make a living and you want to be paid, it's very difficult to just like take the check and look down and be like, I know how much you made on food and drinks there, club guy. Yeah. But it's like, we wouldn't have clubs if it wasn't for Breslin and Yuck Yucks, you know? For, yeah. so for all of like our frustration as as people wanting to survive and make a living, looking at like a corporation and being like, can I get a little big, you know, a little bit more of that pie, sir? Yeah. It's like, we need to be a little bit more grateful and not be so shitty to our thoughts and perceptions on the clubs and just be like, we wouldn't have, we would still be begging kid rock to take us on tour so we could do a tight five yeah opening up his concerts if it wasn't for people like mark breslin you know what i mean well so. it's a weird thing to think of i when howard came on the show i asked him that too like what was it like because ottawa was like 84 or something yeah, they opened the club 84. and uh but the first yuck yucks i think was like 79 or yeah. something along those uh, lines. 76, 76 yeah. yeah 76 yeah. so like Prior to that, if you lived in Canada, you just couldn't see live comedy unless oh, yeah. it was like some... I don't even know if they had arena comics back then that would tour like oh, that. Yeah. So no wonder HBO specials were such a big deal in the, you know, yeah. in the early years or did those start in the 80s, I guess? It might be a little after. Anyways, yeah, but yeah. just that world of not being able to just go to a comedy club and see oh, live yeah. comedy. David Steinberg, uh, who I've read his book... Uh, um, inside comedy talks about going on tour with like the band like what was it uh not, who who did the who were the 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 he just passed away it was the he was it, it was, was the, the band, band i think yeah it was the band yeah. but who was the who was the guy he just i know who you're talking about yeah. because he was in the icu like kelly and and her nurse team they were taking care of the oh, guy when really? he passed away yeah. over there actually just down the street yeah i can't i can't think of his name but anyways like yeah. he used to like open up for them like oh, wow. because there was no that that was comedy back then it had yeah 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 that's wild i did not know Fuck, that fucking hmm. wild man yeah. i wish i knew the guy's name that's gonna bug me too yeah, yeah. Uh, okay this is a one last question normally yeah. that's the last question but this i saw online and i was like i gotta 
take this and try it out. And maybe it'll become the new season question. Uh, what is one question that you wish I would have asked you today and how would you have answered it? Oh, ooh. Right? Um, yeah, I don't, man, I don't know. I mean, maybe we like maybe we could have talked about more music stuff. Ask because okay, I've, I've, okay. got, I've, I've, got, I've got a couple of cool stories about like, you know, I mean, one time I, I, I've had two separate occasions I've had renowned Canadian guitar players stop their shows to tell me that I'm such a good guitar player. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, in one instance was... Uh, Humble brag, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one instance was uh, the guitarist for Coney Hatch and the Guess Who, uh, oh, wow. Carl Dixon, stopped his show. I'd, I'd been asked by Fender to like demo their new acoustic uh, guitar thing, and I just did a bunch of loop stuff uh, and uh, and wow. right before he took the stage, and then he stopped playing like... I don't know, say hello or something like that. And was like, you're an amazing guitar player. And then another time was um, uh, Melissa Etheridge's and uh, Jeff Healy's guitarist, Philip Sace. Damn. Stopped, I opened up for him in Toronto at the Silver Dollar Room. And then I went to go see him in Kingston and he stopped his show at the mansion. and was like, hey, this guy's a great guitar player. That's crazy. And I was dude. like, you used to play with Jeff Healy. So that's that's a huge compliment, man. So, yeah. Yeah, that's insane for anyone to stop what they're doing and just, yeah. like, address you in the and crowd. And that's me like, just, like, unzipping my pants, just <laughs> dropping my huge rod <laughs> on this, so, on this so, so I think then this is uh, his next visit, right? It's the music show. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, you can come back sometime yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, to anyone who watched, thank you. Um I don't know where we're going in the next month. Really, my dad, you're going back to Toronto a lot. Jason will probably fill in. So hopefully we'll do some more in-studio stuff, but I'll try to keep a few more episodes coming before the season ends. Uh, October 21st is the cutoff date cool. as far as we go. And then yeah. I usually take a, a month off or whatever. We'll see. But really, we're getting close to episode 100. This is episode 84. So nice, man. Congratulations. Um, I don't know when it'll be. It would have been awesome if it had lined up to be the, the finale of this season or the premiere of the next season. But... Uh, the plan is to do a live podcast oh. at Yuck Yucks. I mentioned it to Howard and he seemed on board uh, and have some returning guests, maybe some new guests and do more of like a, uh, you know, how they do live podcasts. Yeah. Start with one guest and then another one joins and some people stick around and, you know, yeah. and then maybe have some stand up afterwards yeah. uh, with some of those people as well. So you perform your theme song live. My theme song. Yeah. Oh, well, oh know, shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I haven't yeah, played that know. in years. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks a lot for coming, man. Oh, dude, thank this you for having so me. This was so much fun. I'm, I'm so a, glad I'm, we finally did it. I'm a super it. fan, so I'm, fucking, I'm, I'm you, happy. Thank very you. happy. Cool. Well, high five it at the end. Cheers. Hey. Oh, peace.